Hello guys, we are back with our next lecture. In this lecture, let us go through our first process model. Okay, so the first process model which was introduced with SDLC model or basis of SDLC model is nothing but waterfall model guys. So basically from the name we can say that okay, it is nothing but like a waterfall. Okay, so assume that there is a huge waterfall and the water is like if you visited any kind of waterfalls or any kind of dams like basically there will be some steps right like this there will be some steps like basically there will be from far away like there will be some plane again there will be somewhat down and again there will be down somewhat down and somewhat down the water will be flowing in this way okay so these are the waterfall model this is the main idea of waterfall model guys so basically you will be completing one particular step you will be coming to the next step and you will be starting the next step again the next step next step in this way the steps continues okay okay so now let us go through waterfall model in detail guys okay so waterfall approach is or was the first sdlc model to be used widely in software engineering to ensure the success of the project so basically in the initial stages the software model that they were using was waterfall model so currently nowadays the waterfall model is an outdated model like most of the companies are not using waterfall model due to its drawbacks so we'll be discussing about them, them also don't worry so in waterfall process approach the whole process of software development is divided into separate phases you can say it into six different phases guys six phases okay so in waterfall model once the outcome of one phase acts as an input to the another phase so basically you just to take an example here so here we are doing requirement analysis so the result of requirement analysis will help in system design so the outcome of system design will help in implementation design the implementation will help in testing testing will help in de deployment so that will be help in maintenance okay so these are the few steps guys you can say one two three four five six the six main steps or six main phases so remember that even in the diagram, I have just drawn overlapping, but make sure you are not drawing them overlapping because each step is independent of the other. So from requirement gathering, you'll be going to here like that step by step. And the only way to return back is the maintenance. Once the maintenance is done, if you want to do any maintenance, you'll again, you'll be coming back to requirement gathering and you'll be doing the same process. There is no in between parts. So basically in some uh, books and in some uh, online pptc and everywhere it, it is having a path but it is better to not give the path guys because it is only a one way process and you will return back to the first phase okay so now let us go through the phases so basically this phases we have given the theoretical detailed theoretical explanation in sdlc so you can write the same theoretical aspects here also so only i am writing the additional aspects okay so requirement gathering and analysis so from the name itself we can say here we are correcting the requirements for the particular project so all possible requirements of the system to be developed are captured in this phase and documented. So basically you will be collecting all the requirements and you'll be documenting them in a proper format so that this thing you can pass it to the next step and next step can utilize the benefits of this step. Okay. So the next step is nothing but system design. So in this step you will be designing how you want to, how are, what are the requirements of the system, specific hardware requirements, system requirements and everything you'll be analyzing here. And you will be making the document it is called as SRS and you will be analyzing them okay so system design helps in specifying the hardware and system requirements and helps in identifying the overall system architecture okay then you will be moving on to implementation in this phase at first a small program called units are written tested individually called unit testing okay so basically here we will be doing some kind of small small things guys so basically in implementation you will be converting the whole project into small small modules guys basically you can say in that way and each module is a tested so that module testing is nothing but a common testing and once the modules are ready you will be integrating those modules and you'll be doing the testing so integration is nothing but you'll be combining all the modules into one big project or one big module and you'll be testing it with as per your requirements so all the units developed are integrated into a system and testing is done okay then we will be moving on to deployment of the system so in deployment of the system once the system testing is done and everything is done you'll be deploying the system to the world so basically you'll be releasing it worldwide or into your capital or into your target audience okay and the last step will be the maintenance so if there are any issues 
they will be resolved here. So basically based on the customer feedback or the client feedback, you will be continuing the process again and you will be moving back to the gathering the requirements and doing the same process again. Okay, guys, I have given just an introduction because we have already discussed about this for each process. We discussed almost a page of theory guys in the last lecture. So please watch the last lecture before watching this guys. That's the reason why I told you, please watch the videos continuously. Okay, so for this theory, you can refer the previous lecture guys. Okay, so the major advantage here is it is simple and easy to understand. So basically you are following some steps, right? So everyone can follow. If I say you do this step, you'll be doing next step like that. You can say it easily. And phases are started and completed one at a time and phases do not overlap. So basically one phase depends on another, but it does not overlap on another. So parallelly there are no two phases or three phases going on. Basically there are only one phase active at a particular time. Okay. So requirements are well understood here and the cost of this whole process will be low because we need only one process team and that team will be working in a continuous flow in all the six stages and they'll be giving you the product at the end. Fine. Okay. But the major disadvantages here is it is difficult to acquire of the requirements in the starting. So I told you once you pass a particular step, there is no coming back here. So if you collected the requirements and unfortunately you collected some false requirements, your client requirement is something and you collected the requirements in a wrong way. So the client meetings and everything are done after each and every stage. So that is the reason why you, you will be continuing until some stages. And if there is something wrong, you need to return back to main system requirement again. So basically here we are not having any overlapping. So you need to come back again and you need to come in, continue from the start. So that is a difficulty here. And there is a high risk because if there is anything going wrong in the previous step, the next steps are completely flaw guys. So basically those all things will be going wrong. Okay. So there is a no suitable to accommodate any changes. So assume that your client is saying some you did the project and you are now in the testing stage and your client informed you that now I want this change. I want this in this is an additional future. So you'll be informing that sir, please wait until the maintenance and we'll be giving you the product. Then you inform us, then we will be restarting our cycle and we'll be doing the whole process again. You'll be informing in that way. So that is a drawback and it is not good for large projects. So assume that it is given for you to build an LMS guys learning management system. So you will be struck in requirement gathering only. You want this, you want that, you want this. You will be collecting the requirements from the client and you will be stuck here only. Here you will be taking one month, here you will be taking one month. So like that it will take lot of time and compared with the normal approaches guys. So that is the reason why the software development model that is nothing but waterfall model will not be used in a great way. So I hope everyone got a clear idea on waterfall model. So in the next lecture, we will be going through incremental process models. The first model that we'll be discussing is incremental model. And after that, we'll be discussing about a rapid rad. We'll be discussing about rad guys. Okay. So in the next lecture, we'll be going through incremental model. Okay. I hope this lecture is clear. So in the next lecture, we'll be going through incremental model. So let us meet in the next lecture. Thank you. Thanks for watching.